I literally grew up really happy. I grew up in Akron, Ohio, this single mom, two bedroom apartment with four brothers and a sister. But the only time I wasn't happy is I caught my mom crying because the car broke down or the dishwasher broke down. Or my mom invested everything into her children, six kids, all of them Ivy League, summa cum laude, really kind people and have proved it today with you know 16 grandkids or whatever she has. Yeah. But moreover, she worked two jobs, never complained, packed her dinner in a paper bag. She's, I choke up, I can barely talk about it. Yeah. But she showed unconditional love. And so for me, my whole life was to prove to her that I could help her, because nobody did. Like my mom's the kind of mom, you come down with the wrong attitude, go back upstairs. Yeah. I'm not allowing it. She would tell me, you're living below the line, blame, shame, justification. Don't count other people's money. Like all these little things that I didn't listen to. I just wasn't my mother who was in that business of empowering children. I don't have the patience for that. It wasn't in my aptitude. Or, and although I love my children, um, I'm not sure I could teach hundreds of them every day for 47 years like my mom did. That's a saint. And I'm glad that my mom made me study. Now, most people wouldn't know it because my mom's your typical Jewish mom. Stands about this tall. She cooks like a m unbelievable. <laughs> but she is a third degree black belt in the martial arts. Yes, yeah, it's terrifying. She is a third degree black belt in martial art of Jewish guilt. Which is why I still studied and why my siblings were so successful. Why I think I'm still successful. She still has that over me. I just said, you know, gosh, if I could just be rich, I could buy my mom a house, I could buy my mom a car, and then she'd be happy. My goal was to move into a different world, an abundant world, where I could afford everything, including a house and a car for my mom. I want to make a lot of money because I want to buy my mom a house and a car. And I thought that's what was going to make me happy because the only time I wasn't happy was when my mom was unhappy and the only thing that stressed my mom out was money. But I'd created bad causes in my life. I'd made dumb decisions. I'd surrounded with the wrong people and the wrong ideas. I wasn't asking for help. I was living in arrogance, egotistical living with time, ego attached to outcomes. Two years after I was in my transformation, I went bankrupt. Do you remember why I wanted to be rich? Anyone? Help my mom. What do I want to buy her? A house and a car, right? So I had to go walk over to my mom's house before I left for work, knock on the door, wake her up, tell my mom, Mom, I've lost everything. I'm bankrupt. And by the way, you have to move because I lost your house as well. I said, you know, I'm accountable. I lost everything. And I paused and took a breath. I'm like, I uh, forgot to take your house out of my name. And so you're gonna have to move. The bank owns this house. Without blinking, she looked at me and said, are you okay? Do you need any money? Is there anything I can do for you? To me, I live my whole life going, my mom doesn't have a clue. She's so lost. She made $17,000 a year teaching. She put all this guilt onto me and my siblings. She doesn't have a clue about what it takes in life. Without me, she would be nothing. That was untrue. I loved her. I appreciated her. I did everything I could to make her proud of me, but I didn't respect who she was because I equated who she was, what she did, what she had, and what other people thought of her. But on Saturday, we, Sunday, we had a party for her 75th birthday, and she had all these people there, and they gave toasts. And they talked about my mom as a leader, as a mentor. Uh, there was a kid there, kid there, there was a 40-year-old there that broke down in tears and told my mother how she changed his life. My mom was his second grade teacher. There was other ladies there. My mom was the principal of the San Diego Jewish Academy, the leading private school in San Diego. My mom was a community leader and pres president of different women's organizations. My mom, at a later age, my siblings and I put her to Columbia and got a PhD in education. All of this stuff got lost in my mind somewhere over the last 25 years because eventually my giving to my mom almost destroyed my relationship because I saw my mom as needy. I saw my mom as weak. I forgot, you know, I've, you know my siblings went to Harvard, Penn, Columbia. They, they're extraordinary people. That didn't come from anywhere except for my mom. She raised us. 
And I started realizing as I watched how many good deeds my mom had. And in the end, she's received, she's never wanted money. That's not her ask. But she was asking big her whole life. And I, I didn't realize it. But she, she was asking big. What did she ask for? She asked for healthy, successful children and 14 healthy, successful grandchildren and to be healthy herself. So at 75 years old, my uncle's extremely successful. Allergists, lawyers, millionaires, extremely successful. And they almost patronized my mom when I was growing up because at times my mom had to borrow money from her, her brothers and sisters. And I always felt that she felt she was inferior to them. And it was so nice for the universe because her values were different than my values, but her ask was so big and she had manifested. At 75 years old, I looked at it as a 50 year old with four children and said, man, I wish I could be like my mom.